A look at the members of our home planetary system reveals a striking pattern. Almost every planet in our galactic neighborhood is orbited by at least one moon. And indeed, some of these exciting satellites repeatedly move into the center of attention when it comes to the question of potentially habitable worlds. Accordingly, it's now considered certain that Jupiter's moon Europa and Saturn's satellite Enceladus hide gigantic oceans beneath their icy surfaces. So, while we have already gained some exciting insights into the moons of the solar system, identifying and studying their extrasolar counterparts is much more difficult. In fact, experts have so far only managed to track down two natural satellites outside our planetary system. Now we'll show you what we've learned so far about these exciting astronomical bodies. Want to learn more about the exciting discoveries in the cosmos on a regular basis? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space and click on the bell to never miss one of our videos in the future. Feel free to show us with a thumbs up that we can keep you excitingly informed with the content of our posts. On the Trail of Alien Worlds a look at recent research history proves that the exploration of the universe is becoming more and more concrete. The first extrasolar planets, located outside our solar system and gravitationally bound to another host star, were added to stellar maps in the mid-1990s. Since then, the galactic search for clues has borne manifold fruits. As of December 18th, 2020, 4,904 exoplanets in 3,628 different systems were known. A large part of these strange celestial bodies are not identified, however, in a direct way, but with the help of the so-called transit method. When a planet passes by its parent star, it always obscures a part of the host star for the observer so that its brightness is subject to apparent variations. To exclude that the registered brightness change was triggered by another event, at least three transits with the same time interval to each other must be documented. The corresponding brightness curves of the stars not only indicate the actual existence of exoplanets, but some characteristics of the accompanying celestial bodies, including the planetary radius and the inclination of the orbit. The probability of observing a planetary transit at a randomly selected star is reported to be less than 1%, so what doesn't seem particularly promising at first glance has actually already helped researchers reach countless milestones. As of August 2019, more than 3,000 exoplanets have been detected using the transit method, accounting for more than 80% of all known extrasolar planets. As we mentioned at the outset, almost every planet in the solar system is accompanied by at least one natural satellite. Consequently, one might assume that this pattern could also be applied to those planets that orbit stars other than the Sun. However, the sobering truth is, so far, only two promising exomoon candidates are known. But why is that? The satellites are often too small for the transit method, which experts have already used to detect so many strange worlds. Consequently, they are usually also too light to attract attention through their gravity effects. Since the list of the so far discovered exomoons is thus extremely sparse, past discoveries possess all the more important value in the ranks of experts. Let's take a closer look at the corresponding celestial bodies and their known characteristics. The First Exomoon Candidate about 8,000 light-years away from our Earth, in the Swan constellation, the exoplanet Kepler-1625b moves in its orbit. Discovered based on the transit method by the Kepler Space Telescope in 2016, the distant celestial body has a diameter that exceeds that of our blue home planet by at least six times. Specifically, the gas giant Kepler-1625b could be comparable in size to Jupiter while possessing ten times its mass. To orbit its ancestral host star, a so-called subgiant with a mass similar to that of the Sun, the exoplanet estimates about 287 days. The transits of the celestial body, which experts have been able to document so far, reveal unusual shapes of light curves. Although the fluctuations and deviations are relatively small, they nevertheless suggest a major victory, the existence of the first known exomoon in the history of science. Even more exciting, if the satellite really exists, it could be located together with its planet in the habitable zone of its system. Remember, the habitable zone is defined as the distance range in which a celestial body must be located to its host star so that water can exist there in a permanently liquid form as a basic prerequisite for life. 
However, in order to first clarify the fundamental question of whether the distant moon really exists, experts followed the transit of the planet over a period of 40 hours, relying on the high resolution of the Hubble Wide field camera on the one hand, and at the same time comparing the previously collected data from the Kepler Space Telescope with astrophysical models. The gratifying finding was that the anomalies in the light curve of Kepler 1625b were confirmed again, about 3.5 hours after the gas giant had triggered a temporary dimming of its parent star. A second, much fainter dimming of the central star followed, a circumstance that undoubtedly fits a planet accompanied by a smaller moon. Another clue suggesting the existence of this exomoon is the time of the transit. The gas giant began transit scarcely 80 minutes earlier than the researchers had predicted due to its orbit. In fact, such deviations may be due to the gravity of a satellite. In simple terms, the satellite causes its planet to sway slightly, so that it is sometimes slightly ahead and sometimes slightly behind its expected position. Although the actual presence of the first discovered exomoon in history has not yet been 100% confirmed, experts believe it's most likely that the observed anomalies are due to the influence of a satellite. Accordingly, Kepler 1625b could have a satellite the size of Neptune, which orbits it on an orbit inclined at 45 degrees. However, according to the researchers' assumptions, the moon in question would not be solid, but a predominantly gaseous astronomical body. So even if the moon is in the habitable zone of its system, it's considered unlikely to harbor Earth-like life. Gigantic Supermoons no less captivating than the observation just presented was the news that made the headlines a few weeks ago. Once again, scientists succeeded in tracking down an exomoon candidate. This time, it was the exoplanet Kepler 1708b, 5,500 light years away, and the size of Jupiter, which aroused the interest of researchers. In this case, too, it was conspicuous features in the light curve that suggested the presence of a natural satellite. Regarding its dimensions, the celestial body astonished the experts, just like its predecessor. It could be a particularly massive supermoon, almost three times as large as our Earth. This exciting discovery began when a team of researchers at Columbia University was working on combing through the previously collected transit data of 70 exoplanets to look for evidence of extrasolar moons. The planets in question were cold gas giants separated from their parent stars by fairly large distances. Such gas planets of the size of Jupiter therefore hold a particularly large potential for knowledge. The formation of satellites in this case represents a natural consequence of their formation mechanism. This is due to the fact that gas planets of this size are born in particularly densely populated regions of the primordial cloud. Because of this fact, there is always enough material left to form the satellites. Since gas planets are also known for their large gravity, they are true masters in capturing the corresponding later moons. After 11 of the 70 light curves studied had been shortlisted, one of them finally emerged as a particularly promising candidate. The corresponding signal appeared to be so stable that the experts gave the probability of misinterpretation a value of only 0.024%. To all appearances, both the companion of Kepler 1625b and the satellite of Kepler 1708b seemed to embody massive supermoons of the size of full-grown planets. Before the existence of these exciting celestial bodies can be confirmed, however, we have to be patient. So far, no telescope on our globe has been able to take direct images of the satellites. In fact, experts are still heatedly debating whether such supermoons can actually exist and how they might form. It's possible that the exciting discovery recorded last year with the radio telescopes of the ALMA Observatory could shed some light on the matter. At that time, a circumplanetary disk around a fledgling gas giant outside the solar system was identified for the first time. The rotating cloud of gas and dust contained enough material for the formation of three satellites the size of the Earth moon, or an impressive supermoon. In any case, we're already looking forward to the exciting findings that the researchers will collect and publish in this regard in the future. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the two exciting exomoon candidates that the experts have been able to track down so far? Feel free to write your thoughts suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments below. Are you in the mood for more exciting videos on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for your interest, take care, and we'll see you next time.